Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Cafe. Cafe. You can't, cause you can't break goddamn cafe. That is broke the goddamn cafe. That son of a bitch is against the roof. So broke the goddamn cafe. Cornette, we love you, man. All right, we. Broke the goddamn cafe. Here, we love you here at Cafe, Jim Cornette, man. Brian hey. Last, we love you, man. All right, we love you, man. <laughs> oh, man. We feel we, what y'all feel, man. We feel what y'all feel, but y'all already know Kayfabe is the wrestling podcast for us, by us, myself and Pharaoh. Tender Do is in the building. You know, us getting better at this podcast more and more, getting to the point, getting to the stuff. And today is no different. Um, We're off money in the bank. We are now full steam ahead to SummerSlam, the biggest party of the summer. Going to be in Las Vegas this time in the new uh, Las Vegas Stadium. Um, Mm -hmm. Of course, SmackDown is getting themselves ready, as you as as uh, Chinna do has coined the phrase, where the real talent plays. Uh, We're going to be getting into them just a little bit later into the podcast. But of course, we got to start off with the Raw recap. And uh, Uh, man, woo. Mm. It's gonna be a lot Sheamus, of yawns in this episode. Uh, yeah, man. Sheamus and Damian Priest had a had a cool match. There's there's you know the crowd 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 enjoyed that match. I, you know, I think it's also still the crowds are still having to be back. Like and those, yes. like they had better like they got another week before the crowds are like okay. That's what I'm waiting for. Now um Damian Priest and Sheamus didn't really get much of a build. But as you said, they uh-huh. may be able to capitalize on that with the audience if they could get the audience perf- behind their performances in the ring. And what we saw Monday, that could be that potential if they just keep doing it. I would just allow, I would just say, man, let them two go at it. Don't put uh, Umberto or anybody else to interfere, man. Damian Priest has enough chops to go up against the Celtic Warrior, rookie versus vet. They will deliver a great match. And just leave it at that. Leave it at yep. that. It ain't got to be no corniness. It ain't got to be no nothing. I just want to see uh, the, the Puerto Rican New Yorker brawl with the Celtic Warrior. Period. Yep. That's um, it. That's it. Let them slug it out. Let them, let them slug it out. That's it. Let them boys agree, slug it out. Yeah, man. And so uh, more more action kept coming on. Um, we had the tag titles up for the uh, for grabs here. Uh, but of course, AJ Styles and almost defeated the uh, War Raiders once again. Will not acknowledge them as the Viking Raiders. Um, the War Raiders in the uh, Raw Tag Team Championship match. Um, you know, as soon as I'd be like, "Yo, take these belts off of them," they keep doing stuff that's just making me like, I "See why these belts on y'all?" Yeah, because honestly, like again, because AJ Styles is AJ Styles. All right, yeah. this is just phenomenal, and I, and almost. He's just, he's so big. Like you looking like, no, like you look at him like the Viking Raiders are no small dudes. They're not no. small guys. And not you look all. at him next to almost, and you're like, whoa, like you they look like cruiserweights. And yeah. you just like, and there's certain things he can do. And you just be like, yo, he's really big. Like I, like you said too, and the match, I, I, they, I was entertained. Just like I had money in the bank, I was entertained. Mm-hmm. So I was oh, yeah. like, I mean. Yeah, that's same dope. here. Like, yeah, yeah. Same here. Uh, yeah. Whenever he's, you can. Whatever you can make uh 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 what is uh Eric look small as Osmos continues yeah. to do, man. Like, yo, it's always dope to see. So I really hope they continue like some kind of back and forth with them. Like, you know, not nothing to take away from AJ and them of not, I don't want to say they're not a legitimate tag team, but you know, to see a tag team that does have a history like the uh War Raiders, I think that would be a great uh feud for them. They it definitely help them establish themselves as uh tag champs if they want to continue to uh have them hold the belt. And, um, but here's where we start to veer off a little bit in the creative side. Now, um, we kept wondering what we're going to do with Drew McIntyre. Where would he go? And so um, safest place was to put him in a, a feud with his former 3MB uh, mate, Jinder Mahal, and his new staple, which um, do they even have a name? No. 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 So, so we don't know if this, this this faction is even established. They've been together a month. Over a month now. There is no name hmm. for this faction. Okay. But um a month. That, yeah. A month. This is very true. And we got to see um Drew McIntyre 
uh, perform a hate crime live on Monday Night Raw. <laughs> and, uh, oh, man, got away with it. What I'll tell you, 20, that boy didn't do <laughs> Credit mm-hmm. to Drew. Honestly, I feel like right now he knows that he's no longer their, like, top man event focus right now. He knows it. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I feel he, she, I feel he's he's really doing the best with what he what he's given, and honestly, and that's why I feel like, I don't, that's why I, that's why I I try to pay attention to his stuff. I try to, but it's just, but like even you can just tell like like guys like, are you guys just putting Drew down here for a while or something like? What's going on? Like it's almost like they stopped caring about him creatively the past like I feel year. Even when he was champion, it's almost like they just started to like. Well, the thing is, it's what I've what I've noticed about Drew though. Drew kind of has like this intensity no one else is matching and that's what i think the thing is too i think drew like because again too a lot of people don't have drew's mindset remember like drew had yeah. this and took it for granted lost it had to really like go find his passion again go and find his love for what like he wanted to do and stuff like that and so you know like he knows like now that you know like that he's back in at least that light and that favor and that he had that shine that he had you know like I, you could definitely tell that he's still very dedicated and loyal to the company and so even in the in the uh you know in this limbo of not kind of knowing what to do with him you can still see that fire of like even like in, in perfect example of, of facing uh uh shanky you're still giving that intensity. You're still giving that fire, like you have the belt on you. And so it's just like, did you say what Shanky? Is, <laughs> uh, what, is, what is his name? Did you mean Seamus? No, Drew. Drew, who's who, who the little boy with uh with, with gender in him? Ain't his name Shanky? Shanky, Shanky and Veer. Not- Shanky and Veer. That ain't their name. Oh yeah, Shank. Ah, uh, is it? Is it not? Is it Shank? Is it Veer? Is it Vera? I, I'm I am probably 96 percent sure I'm saying Shanky. both names wrong. No, no, I'm probably I am almost 100 percent sure I'm saying the name wrong. So let me just throw that out there. But um, I believe it's Shane. Or, you know, they may have some way that they say it, and if it is, I do apologize. This is not to make. Yeah, I know what we mean. We apologize. We don't mean no offense. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I apologize. Not at all. And please believe me. Once I hear it properly, I will say it properly. Just to be, just to be known. But yeah, so it's just I feel like whoever he he beefs with has to match that intensity. Like if it were a Drew versus Miz, if Miz was still active right now, I would love to see that. Those two can match each other personal wise, or you know, you know, um, uh, personality wise versus personality wise, and even in the ring too, they would deliver a good match. So that's why I think his stuff needs to be strategic in that move of matching him with good beefs. But you know, and so we'll see with Jinder Mahal. Like we get it, so we'll see exactly what happened because we've seen Jinder deliver. Um, and, and, you know, Austin, that's such a valid point too, man. Because it's not that many people. He, he, like, like, there's only a few people who can match the intensity. You got Lesnar, you got Edge, you got Cena. They're all busy. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah. But then, but this also gives a good opportunity for the people in that that singles mid tier to maybe be able to step up. And so, when it is time for Drew to come back, maybe they'll be able to go along with him, sort of like uh, like a Sheamus or like a Jinder Mahal, because we've seen Jinder at the top. So it's nothing for when Drew makes that descent back up, which we are most certainly that he will when it's time for him to get the call. Those matches and those beefs that he had, that would give them a, a direct road to them going to a WWE championship, like probably seen it on Jinder Mahal once again, if it's played properly. I agree. Yeah, so uh, what was not played properly, though, was these uh, women tag team championships um, against... Uh, 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 do, do, do drop a rapper and, um, of uh, all red, everything. everything. Listen, all, all red, all red, listen, everything. Baby. Listen, okay. listen. All red. All red. I can't even hold, stuck. I can't even hold up what I got red because we ain't sponsored by them yet, but you know what <laughs> it is, man. Um, once I get, wasn't mad at the match, but it's just like, Another way of not understanding what's going on, like okay, are 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 Eva Marie and Dewdrop in a tag team? Like, what's going on? And then two, like as you had spoken before in the last episode, um, it, are Shauncey and Tegan never gonna get their title shots? Like, I don't like. I that's where your tag champs. That's where your beef is. Why are you on Raw fighting? That's where your beef is at. I mean, I get that you can go wherever, but. That's where somebody wants to put their where you can put your title up at. 
So I don't understand. Yep. It just seems like another, just kind of like a filler match and stuff like that. And just another one I couldn't completely understand is um, Karrion Cross returning to Raw again. And then now, um, instead of losing, as he did last week to Jeff Hardy, he now picks up a victory against the returning Keith Lee. Squash Keith Lee. Squash Keith Lee. Squashed. What happened? Like, what did he do? Did he do something? Why is Terry in here? I do not understand. I do not understand. And, and, And to be honest with you, like, before we even get into the Keith Lee stuff, let's take him out the picture. Let's take him out. Put someone else. Like you could have put Mustafa or Mansoor, who who you know defeated um if that's still whatever the, the, the revival, whatever, you know, uh, uh, uh Dominic and who what he sh- his name real name should be instead of that Mace T bar crap. You could have put oh, it, any four of them against Karen Cross, and I would still ask the question, why is he here? Yeah, why? What are you doing? What is the NXT champion? doing on Raw in the middle of Raw, not making a real statement. I when never they, thought, I never thought I'd say, but like Kenny Omega's booking as champion is better right now than Karen Cross. And I'm not a fan of Ken, Kenny Omega, how Kenny Omega's been booked. And this is, this is terrible. They brought him on to be Keith Lee who they have already let us know has no momentum coming into this. I mean, he got railroaded by Bobby Lashley in an impromptu WWE Championship match, debuted his home state, got a decent pop, squashed this next week. Now, if you go on ringside, there's a picture of Keith Lee just getting choked out. Just Like, what, what, what? Like, that's what they, like, and completely discarded. Karrion Cross does not belong on Raw. I believe he's in a few of Samoa Joe. I mean, at this point, I'm hoping they put the belt on Joe. Honestly, like, put it on Joe. You can't cross away from this and, and do whatever you're going to do with it. But you're really making NXT look bad. Horrible. Like, and that, and horribly. That's it right there. Like, I don't, I, is, this is a champion that I, I, I'm just going to be honest with you. This is a champion no one's currently behind right now. No one is getting a real excitement when it comes to him. There is no real type of, promos that's being used with this guy when it comes to anything i don't know what real feud that he's having you're pretty he's pretty much a paper champion because there's nothing that you can do with him you have yep. this what he's what he's six he's six what six five to six seven and then you've mimicked nxt to go against the little smaller guys and stuff like that and then you proved that none of them can stand a chance because you had him in a fatal five-way match and you had him wash through all of them so now all of your top competition is gone you may have had bronson reed that may have gave him something but you finna bump him up to the uh, to either smackdown or raw so it is i'm sorry to tell y'all but the big muscular ball-headed white boy look don't work no more at all the five basic moves he got that i'm on my phone acting like i'm sleep sleeper hole it doesn't work not to say carrying cross isn't something but you need a new gimmick you need a new strategy and to be honest with you still to this day it is still the status fact that you have that belt on you and every time we see you the number one question we ask is when is scarlet gonna get in the ring that should piss you the hell off that we weren't worried about your woman being in the ring performance wise, not even, not even look wise, because we yeah. know how she put on in that ring. Yeah. And we gotta, we gotta sit here, watch her crawl through your legs and gotta sit here for the next 20 minutes and watch your boring ass. I mean, that's, I, I, I will have to, I will have to agree, man. Like, and again, like when it comes to Scarlet, it has nothing to do with looks or anything like that. This is truly just as a performer wrestler. She's a good wrestler. She's good in the ring. And I, 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 at this current point, I would prefer to see her in the ring than Carrie. And, like, I'm not into the gimmick, the character. The promos don't push me. Like, the, it, it doesn't it, – I'm not – I don't – I'm not with it. When I see the belt on him, I'm just like, yo, why isn't – I was like, for him, like, maybe he could be a North, North American champion. Maybe. I, I, again, I, I still I, don't I, even – 
I, no. I, I don't see any belt that looks good on that would look good on him. Like, I don't see it. Like, I don't. I don't know what you are. That's my whole thing, yeah. too. I'm like, are you? Because here, here, here's the thing, too. I think this is another thing that maybe, you know, like, because, again, I'm not, I'm not, I, again, I'm really not a fan of his move set, but that can always improve. That's nothing that can't be changed. Like, if, if, if five moves seen, it can be a legend. Anybody can, just performance-wise. Yeah. Um, but for himself, it's like your character is not developed. When you saw Kane, Kane was the devil's favorite demon. You could construct all of that. So even when he turned into corporate Kane, you knew what it was. I don't know what he's doing. Like, are you from some, some do you have powers? This is the, do, are you feeding in from the dark forces? Like you've defined nothing but TikTok. The yeah. end is here. So it's like, okay, what does that, what does that mean? I feel like, it feels like when I see him, I was like, why is he, like you, like to me, this is, I, I look at it in terms of gimmick and what they're trying to convey to the audience. I feel like, why do you have him? You had Aleister Black. You were trying to convey, but you already had Aleister Black. And Aleister Black was already there. And this guy, I don't get it. No, Aleister sorry, Black I, is from. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, I wouldn't, need, I don't even want to disrespect Aleister Black like that. You know who, you know, you know who we really remind me of? You were just a a bigger version size wise of Tommaso Ciampa who just can't get it right. That's the mindset I think of when you because that sadistic side that he had when he displayed when he came out it's like that's what you're trying to do and it's not touching. If he if he could do that if he could convey himself that way I think Vince Vince would love him, but yeah. he can't. But he can't. He so does just, like. Yeah, he can't. Tommaso's intensity is just unmatched. Like nobody can do it like him. So he had that. He had revenge. He had something to prove. It was though, like it was just like, yo, I'm not letting nothing get in my way. Even if it's the same thing on a pure destruction wise, it's just like, yo, I don't like to me. I'm like, I don't believe you can beat Samoa Joe. I think Samoa Joe will beat the brakes off of you. Mm -hmm. And so I shouldn't be thinking that on my champion. My yeah. champion should be my champion should be standing tall. I should be, if you're going to go with this gimmick, I should fear you. The only thing I fear is that you may have made Keith Lee status drop even more after losing to you. Because for I'm, some reason, I don't know why y'all keep letting him lose to Keith Lee. What did he do? What did, and the thing is, too, is almost like they could have they, 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 they could have even done a little bit with this. This is the guy that took the NXT championship off of Keith Lee to begin with. Mm -hmm. But not only that. He got called up. But out of that, Keith Lee kind of cost him the title because he got injured right after. So it's just like it was a bittersweet yeah. moment. You took the belt off and still couldn't enjoy it. So it's like, like you said, if now if we see it next week and it's a round two, Keith Lee wins, and that's like, okay, you try, you got some, you got a score, you got to settle. I yeah. see it, I get it now. But if it's not that, if it's just you having this guy walk in here, not cut no promo, not do nothing, and then just have a regular opponent come out, I'm just like. What? What's the point? Like, I feel like the NXT title, when he had to drop it, I wasn't like, of course, I don't want anyone to be injured, but I wasn't like, oh, man, I hate to see right. it. Then when, and then Balor showed up and won. I was like, oh, yeah, let's do this. Right. Like when Balor had it, honestly. Right. And so I don't I don't know what they're doing, but you know we don't I, we, we don't want to make this the carry and cross show, and so just keep keeping it booking, man. We just want to you know we still got 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 love for Keith Lee, man. Hopefully, you know. Uh, we, we still here, no matter what you what you're doing, whatever you have, bro. It's always we, we limitless with you, man. Um, same thing going going to uh, Mustafa and Mansoor kind of have the, this this thing that they're trying to form, going up against his former teammates and stuff like that. I'm just like, mm. Mm. Mm, shit. for that whole hour, them two performed. That's how I was feeling. <laughs> that is how I was feeling, man. And it's just like, and you, 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 you feel for him too, because it's like you try to try the best of what you're giving, but it's like, man, they, they really dropped the ball so much. Yeah. Like with a guy like Mustafa, who you feel who gets it, who can who can perform, who can go on the mic. But it's like they never just get they. It's like it's always a, a quarter push. Like we'll go, oh, all right, that's enough. every time. 
Like, I don't think I've ever seen a faction come in and do so little so quick. Yeah. Like, I, I've never seen that. Like, having Retribution come in with no no real leader at all, no nope. real, like, stand front person to say what y'all are doing. Then you give it to Mustafa, and it's like, okay, you know, it seems like it could be something, and then it's just, oh, you know, they kept losing it, too. Oh, I'm so sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, just think about it, got me tired. Look, look, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm going to keep it simple as this is so we can, we can move forward. Just, um... Y'all are on, they probably on the road to main event and it's just nothing that can be done about that, man. Maybe uh, somewhere else will, will help. I don't, I don't know. Just at this point, it's just kind of like, hey, y'all are definitely putting on some main event matches and storylines. I, I, I feel so bad for Dominic Dajakovic. Like, man. Bruh. Amazing talent. Amazing. And just, hey, for your trouble, put a mask on and change your name and go out there as T-Ball. What? What? So I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't. Hey, wait a minute. Where was he? Where was he? Ha- where was he built from? Russia. Hey, Russia. Yeah. Oh, right. hold on. Now a lot of shit makes sense though. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. That may be why. Uh, because you gotta remember, like he came in around that time, like with the whole Trump thing, the Putin stuff, and just oh yeah, you know, dot and then Donald also had formerly being associated with the WWE, and they tried to really push that out the way and stuff like that. So that may but if you notice, ever since Trump came in office, they've not done no like disrespectful USA stuff, like they ain't done no Rusev like stuff, like where you know where he disrespect America or anything like that since he had took office. So point point of fact that, I do want to point out the fact that the president is also, the former president is also a WWE Hall of Famer. That's wild. I would also like to point out, though, that the uh, the former president was also stunned by Stone Cold Steve Austin, and I think Stone Cold should receive the Medal of Valor for uh, his services rendered to this country. Man. Who do you think took the worst stunner, him or Linda McMahon? <laughs> Linda, bro, Linda be little like she died after she get hit, bro. I'll be like, yo, that, yo, that woman ain't here no more. Like, <laughs> y'all need to check on her. <laughs> That's, that didn't go right. No worries. She was like, oh my God. Well, <laughs> well I am already on my check, you know. But what match was next? Uh, was uh, was it uh, Charlotte Nikki? Mm. Is that name? No, 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 no. It was actually the WWE champion um, closer burying the potential of putting the Hurt business back together. Um, That's right. Oh, my bro. This made me, this this hurt my heart. Yes, Bobby this Lashley. Hurt. Bobby Lashley uh, faced a handicap match against his former Hurt business uh, members, Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin, a complete squash match. Um, a pure, powerful display for Bobby as a champion, of course, but to bury a future Hall of Famer like Shelton Benjamin and just a unused talent like Cedric Alexander. If I'm just going to be 100% honest, man, complete ridiculousness, man. This is just this is just a clear example of horrible creative writing and a horrible creative process of not knowing to do with, with Black people. And if I'm just being honest, yeah. that's really what it is. You want if you if you want the black dollars, but you want it in your way. That's why you spend New Day because it's positive, it's colorful. You could do what you want. You would hate. I would hate for WWE to be thought of as someone who would not want to see another nation of domination because that's the vibe you get when you do with them. Instead of just seeing four very dominant black successful men who don't take no BS, who ain't here for the nonsense. It's like, yo, I want belts. I want goals. I want records. Period. And like, and for me, when I saw it, I thought like, I was like, why can't, it's almost like it's sad that they can't see that and see what they saw with the corporation or with evolution. They can't see that. Or do you, do you remember uh, Fortune mm-hmm. and TNA? Yep. They can't. Yep. They can't see. They can't see that. They see. Oh man, these guys are. Oh no, they're not. They're too. No nation. No no no. They look too. Like they're not. It's it. 
and like it wasn't even on like uh, it wasn't even on some black power stuff. No, you feel me? Nah, it's whatever. It wasn't even on no hip hop, not no thug gangster nonsense. No, mm-hmm. on no hit roll record thing. And no disrespect to the talent, I do not want record label gimmicks for my black wrestlers right now. I I I have not seen it in full. I part. I just don't want to. Part, you, know, just, you, you know what it is too, though. When you see him, like, let me just like we'll, we'll address this, uh, uh, because I know sometimes we skip over NAC as far as like recaps and stuff like that, but yeah. I do want to address Hit Row Records. What it could do would have been dope if you would have mimicked yourself like them. Leave the music out of here. Do the music outside of here make money if you really gonna do music the problem is i don't believe any of you are a hip-hop group and what's what's sad about it is the only one i believe out of y'all even listen to hip-hop is the woman i think isaiah is a huge anime nerd just like myself and don't have that other side of listening to that gangster stuff i think them other two dudes ain't are in the same exact way that's not, and then again, there's no disrespect. It's just like, I know that ain't y'all. None, none. Like, I feel this gimmick could work if it meant, like, if the records weren't like musical records and their actual win records. Like, it mattered that they stayed undefeated. Imagine a faction. Yes. They were booked to be undefeated. Hit row records. Like, we hit have a after list. hit Ro- after hit, hit. After hit. Like, if they book them like that and they're just good wrestlers. Yep. They don't have to be hip hop. They don't have yep. to be rappers. Just make them good wrestlers. But it's the same gimmick too. Number one on the chart. Why? Because they all we got the ranking system. Number one, yep. once again, hit after hit. What Khaled yep. say? Another one, and then Number hold one. them belts up. But it, but again, why is that? And why is that not happening? Because some dude named Jeffrey from Buttfuck Iowa who listens to Kodak Black is in charge of the creative for all of them. Yeah. Yeah. That's the problem. And that was that that was displayed this Monday on how disrespectful y'all did to that former business. Because once again, um, not and again, using the same four people I just mentioned. You could have had him do that to Mansoor. Could have had him do that to Mustafa. You could have had him do that to Mace and T-Bar. There were hundreds of other people that if you needed to do a squash match to prove his dominance and power, which, if I'm just being honest, haven't you displayed that already? We know Bobby got all might. He's called the almighty WWE champion. Y'all write that on his stuff. I ain't never seen y'all write anything in front of wwe champion yeah. i've never i've never seen them build anyone like that yeah. I mean, that's that that is the, the almighty wwe champion bobby lashley so why do y'all keep giving us this why do y'all keep having him have to display that we get it bobby can fight give him a real challenge how about that mm-hmm. tell brock Lesnar to cut that ponytail saddle up and get in this ring yeah, or have or have or have T bat T ball whatever his name is have the mask and be Dominic and be just be Dominic and go out there and do and and ha- have have a twenty minute banger match where lastly we we show where we show lastly can can go and then he wins and we yeah. have to be where like where, where where like we feel like he's gonna like lose every single single pinfall but make something competitive we want to see a, a champion that can go right we want to see oh. him go and he can go. Or here's another idea. Um, how about stop squashing your talent that is in the same ballpark to go up against him? Because I think that would have been a great match between him and Keith Lee. To be honest with you, not the biggest fan of this next option, but it could definitely be the tenth option if we had a whole ten. I would not mind seeing a match between him and Karrion Cross, just because size and power. Yeah. But no. Y'all too busy letting these people fall through the cracks, not building up your super heavyweights to go up against two champions who are, hmm, super heavyweights or in the heavyweight division. Yet somehow it's it's Rey Mysterio in a Hell in a Cell match against a humongous Roman Reigns. 
Yep. What? Yeah, I let's don't believe that. Let's 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 I book that. Matter of fact, um, the crowd the crowd don't believe it. Just like we knew they uh we knew they wasn't gonna believe it. Let's put it on Friday, and then we just gonna have regular hell in the cell. Where are your big boys? This Where are your big booking, guys? Man. The worst right. booking. This this handicap match should not have happened. The her business for the state of faction. I hated the whole thing, man. I was. I, I I just hate the whole thing. The fact that MVP and these guys break character, break kayfabe themselves, and talk about on social media and saying that it was a mistake to break to break them up because it was. It is, the and it down, still is. The only aside, like like aside from the bloodline, the only dominant faction you guys have had in the past five couple past couple years that I believe these are big guys in suits who can all go. So, this has been so, amazing. Like and that. Like honestly, I thought eventually Ricochet would have turned heel and grabbed that US title and joined. So I mean here, so so here's my question though, to be honest with you. Are we are we are they are they scared that this is gonna top evolution? Because we see those are those are the pillars and steps yeah. that can be taken. Two, 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 of course, you, you got basically three future Hall of Famers in one in one faction. You have yeah. Cedric Alexander with an immense amount of talent. Like you said, you add Ricochet into the fold. You have a whole bunch of talent that you're not going to be able to put into a box. And I think that's the thing that they're really scared of. And that's the display that I'm starting to see. Why do you not want strong, dominant black men that don't fit a stereotype? No disrespect to the New Day. I love that the New Day is one side of that coin. No disrespect to Hit Row Records. I'm glad that you're showing a facet of different versions of us. Yes, as you should have been doing. But why when it comes to that one thing you know y'all take seriously, you go away? Because you knew they were going to be the ones that's going to have to cut that and press that button at the Wall Street thing. You know, those are the four that's going to have to go on Good Morning America when it's time to promote SummerSlam, when it's time to promote WrestleMania. Too many black faces. So don't think that's we don't see it. Don't think that you don't think that you fooling us when we don't see it. That's why you put them women with Bobby Lashley so you could bring it down a little bit. Don't think we don't catch what you're doing. And the fact that you play it fair. They brought the women out and they made him seem like he like honestly, I, I I viewed him as like the distracted champion. Now he's partying now. He's never been that. Ne never. The, the man ain't got no eyebrows. He ain't never been that. <laughs> the man is a fighter. Fighter, yeah. The man is Brock Lesnar, but better. Push him as that. MVP is your Paul Heyman, is your Ric Flair. Push that. Shelton Benjamin is an architect, a man that can build Cedric and Ricochet, high flyers. They should be kings of the skies. But for some reason, when it's time for a serious faction like that to where you could be taken seriously, that's did we see what we see where the where the tipping line is because it's okay to have the power of positivity. It's okay to have hit row records. Hell, it's okay to have some little stylist with a 24-7 championship backflipping everywhere on Raw. But for some reason, it's not okay to see four black men in hundred thousand dollar suits walking down the ring draped in gold talking about we run this. Yeah. And not and not talking and not talking with no what with no hood hip hop accent, it ain't about repping the block. It ain't no freestyle, nothing like that. It is legit. And MVP, although I know his character, the, the you know his original gimmick was like that. This isn't that same MVP. This is like I said. This is his Paul Heyman. This is the mastermind. This is not I'm the hit bro. Right? No, I, I'm the top dollar pimp. No, this no. is I am. The what, 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 what did he say? The um the uh, thing the CEO of the hurt business is a mm -hmm. business. The CFO of the Herb like, business, yeah. Yeah, the CFO of the Herb business. No nonsense. This is corporate, for real. And we handle business. I remember they got mm -hmm. on that show, and they beat down retribution. Yeah. And they said, hey, we'll handle it. And they did. 
And no, and that's the thing that none of them like. I was like, yo, first of all, and if it's not to say to give flowers to MVP, the the masterminding of getting him the championship to get one for us to get to see Miz as champion again, even though he didn't get to hold it as long, but to see him have a championship again and to see Bobby get it. Yeah. I'm sorry, Paul ain't never done nothing like that. Run, run me, run me a great scheme by Paul. Paul got a great mouthpiece. Paul can definitely make some stuff happen from behind the scenes. But scheme wise, man, that was flawless. Yeah. So again, I asked the WWE, what are you afraid of? What are you what are you afraid of if you put four dominant black men that don't gotta fit a stereotype and let them boys walk down that ring and take over? What are you afraid of? Because don't is it is it I cause because again. It's happening on SmackDown, but we know your hands in their pockets, but we're not gonna get on, we're not gonna go too far into that. So we'll leave that as an open-ended question. Cause uh that was not the final match. Um uh we had Riddle versus John Morrison. Once again, not sure why that's there after you have all these dope matches with Ricochet. Not sure why he's right. replaced with him. Was he even on the show? Man, I'm sorry. You were saying? I'm sorry. I mean, you 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 threw it out there. So, did y'all not replay play this man? Because if memory serves me correct, I don't think I've ever seen them repost the same clip three times on social media. Did WWE post him launching off of the rope? across to hit John Morrison during the Thunderdome era to go over? The guardrail, and y'all reposted that three times. Like so nice, got to see it twice. Third time the charm. Money in the bank. Highlight after highlight. Monday Night Raw. Goodbye Ricochet. For Night barefoot, for barefoot Riddle, who is, I don't know what they're doing. And at this point too, like I get in, like I know the RK Bro thing. I know Orton's taking time off. But it was like this match, like this should have been like John Morrison versus Rick Ricochet to see who's going to like take on the U.S. tight U.S. champion. Something there to mean something, to just or, to mean or, something. Three times the charm. One more match to see if John Morrison can get it. This time it's a like you said anything like that. But it's yeah. like now y'all are just it's just oh we didn't have nothing to do so we gonna throw them in like Riddle ain't have no beef with John Morrison whatsoever. Yeah. None. Why is he here? Like, 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 like Morrison. At this point, we really like, like, Miz is gonna be out for a while, guys. Mm -hmm. They said like nine months. Same as Bailey. Yeah. No, no, what? No, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I think yeah. I think no, about the about same thing. Yeah, a couple yeah. months. So this is so this means he's not gonna be in the ring like till after next Mania. Yeah. So like. At this point, Morrison needs to be on a whole other path right now. Let's see what he can do if he turns up with Ricochet, man. Let's see. Let's see something. how he contends with for, for you or something like something. Last time and I like, checked, Riddle didn't Sheamus beat you for the time, and you didn't go back to try to take that off him. No, hmm. no, hmm. nothing. And then the main event, I gotta say, man, you got you got Nikki. First off, I love how you skipped over that twenty four seven match. That wasn't a match, man. That it wasn't, wasn't. A match. <laughs> that was that was that 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 was flippity doo dah flippity a. That was that the was, most. I, I hate to be this guy. That was the most moon cricket shit I ever seen in my life. Oh my god! I'm sorry. I was like, yo, L listen. We only need one R truth, okay? There's only one R truth, and R truth. There's only one, and we only need one. That's it. And our truth has managed to find a perfect line between Coonery and WWE Superstar. There's no one that's going to do it better. He has found a perfect way to walk that line. Yep. Because sometimes you do shit, you just be like, I know you didn't want to do that. Like, something lets me know you didn't want to do that. But on other times, you, you, you'll see him hit them spots and you just be like, Yes. Yes. Yeah. I would have I would love I I, I wanna 
for me, I look at every time I see the segments and so whatever, and it's like, it's hard. Like, whenever I try to turn people on to wrestling, I get them to watch whatever. And then it's usually an R2 segment that'll pop up when I try to get black people to watch the show. And and nothing against Ron Killings, but sometimes the things that they'll have him do or say on camera something like that, sometimes it don't help. I it know doesn't. Ron himself, I know Ron himself loves his career and happy for him six figures do what he loves. I'm very happy because he's you know, he like I'm very happy he has that happiness as well, yeah. of course. But it's just like but to me, I think about 2011 our truth going to the capital punishment against John Cena when he just hit turn heel. He didn't even have a theme entrance. It was just mm-hmm. him. The truth will make you free. And he just came out. He didn't need a theme song because the booze were that loud. That yeah. was his theme song. And when he did awesome truth and they were like on the heel run, that guy, yeah. I like that. Not, now I know he's happy with his life, but to me, I, I, I have very fond memories of that run because I felt like we got to see a glimpse of like what 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 Ron Killings could really do if they gave them that 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 time and that push. But this is like seeing Reginald. Reginald's not a wrestler. All right. Reginald's from Cirque de Olé. Cirque, he's from he's from that. Yeah. He's not a wrestler. It's an acrobat. All right. So he should be in the ring with wrestlers. I know I sound like Jim Cornette. It's a wrestling ring. Would you let anybody would, would you let a gymnast on a football field? No. But again, no. too, where he where he was was great. Where you elevated him to makes no sense. But it's just like, it, like you said, it, it's a it, it, for him. I don't know what they're doing, but even for our truth, it's like only thing I can hope for our truth is that he he gets a coffee mania run. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like another one of those, like just hey, I really can't do because every time when he does have that switch of like, yo, let me really show you what I can do. It's amazing. Like when he, like, I'll never forget when he went up against Randy Orton on SmackDown and was giving Randy that work. It's like, don't get it twisted. He can go. But it's just like, yo, I really feel like, you know what it is? Our truth is like the Flip Wilson of WWE. I come out in these pants and do this rapping so you don't have to. I did it for 20 years. I'm the one that came out screaming, what's up? I'm the one that did all of that. So you don't have to now if you don't want to. Yeah, yeah honestly, too, man. And like in our truth, like he has the found of you too, man. This man is almost 50 years old, guys. No, he, he is 27. 50. He he's is 50, 50. Yes, he he's, is he's 50. 50. He's 50 years old now, and he looks in amazing shape, guys. And again, and I'm 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 happy for Ron Killing to make six figures mm-hmm. love what he does. I'm very happy for Reginald. You know, he gets, you know, he's He's making, you know, he's working, doing, you know, a great job performing. You know, I'm mean, a performer. He's performing on TV. But to me, like, I felt like him being around, I, I, I didn't get it. I understood him with Carmelo. I got that gimmick. I didn't get him with Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. No. And now, like, I feel like he didn't do him any favors, and now he has, and now he has a title. Yeah. But you know, it, it, you know how we already feel about the 24/7 championship. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But um. The main event was a uh, main event. Yep, that's correct. That's correct. That's correct. There was this. That's there was this. Um, you know, I, I don't want to dwell too much into it, but um, um, Nikki, um, almost a superhero cross, who is the current Raw Women's Champion, face off against uh, Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte won, of course, and so now at SummerSlam, it is a triple threat match between the Raw Women's Champion uh, Nikki, almost a superhero, versus Tony. Uh, oh, Tony Storm, excuse me. Uh, versus Tony Rhea, Storm! <laughs> versus Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair. Um, yeah. Uh, I, the only highlight about this is that um, the women were the main event of Raw. So I think that's just a dope thing. Um, Once that's always dope to see. Good to see that Nikki that, you know, got to do that, especially as being a champion as well. So, um, you know, it's one of those like, cool. Like if this the run that y'all going with with her and stuff like that. And then if it's like, hey, she went, she loses at SummerSlam or like because Rhea and Charlotte, you know, battling a back, you know, between once another and she can sneak in and get the victory. It, it's cool, but it's it's a very fast. I feel like it's gonna be a very fast championship, just because I feel, I, you know development wise and everything. What you gonna say? Yeah, I, 
No, I feel the same way. Um, I don't know how this gimmick is going to go over long term with the fans. I know they said they said it works for the kids. And for me, I understand, I'm 34. So, and but I've, I've been a wrestling fan since I was a teenager, though. So I understand there's different, they have different things for the age group, though. And for me, I'm all for them having stuff for the kid audience, though, because you want those kids to grow up and be wrestling fans like we are and keep everything going. I understand that completely. Yeah. It's just that, like, it, but it has to be, to me, I'm like, I mean, I guess it could be good to them, but to me, I was just like, man, like, like I, I would much rather have rather just seen Nikki Cross be Nikki Cross and win, and cash in and and Nikki Cross talk her talk her ish. Yes, let them know what it is. I want them to, I, I want them to hear her with a real life low blow. I want her, I want Charlotte to ask Nikki how her husband's doing on the unemployment line. I want her to say that. I want her to say that to Nikki's face, and the crowd's gonna go crazy. I do and too. Nikki, and, and Nikki's going to slap the ish out of her, okay? Yes. And they really go at it. Or, I, want, or, and I, I want the refs to come out immediately. I want a full scuffle like Nikki and like Nikki is hey, on the cross. But not, but, not to cut, but, not, but not to cut you out, it could flip the other way too. And she throws some shade back, be like, uh, well, we can't all be good as your boyfriend and lay on his feet because he's with the dirtiest bitch in the game. And so then she just slapped the shit out of Nikki. Yeah. Yo, that would have been hard. Break the K fame, goddamn it. That's what I'm saying. Go Jeff Crack is gonna be mad with it. Break the goddamn K fame, man. Break Jim the K fame. Jim Cornette gonna be red hot. Will be red hot. <laughs> what are you gonna get on that idea? They didn't put me down K fame. Don't you know K fame for me, y'all? When he goes on rants, boy, I mean, <laughs> oh, I, love it. I love it. I love it. I will listen to that stuff for 80 minutes long if I had to. Just do it. <laughs> but yeah, man, I, I that that was raw in general, though, man. Um, still, still, you know, some good, some good spots, more of just like developmental side. But of course, we gotta go where the real talent plays. And as we said, man, SmackDown Live ain't disappointing. Now, again, we watch this podcast, you'll see it before the new SmackDown air. So we're talking about the one from the previous week, and it did not disappoint. We had a lot to look forward to after Money in the Bank. And uh, once again, uh, un unlike Raw, Friday Night SmackDown came with it. And I'm just going to be honest with you, clear indication as to why that three-hour, two-hour mark is very vital. Because they are yeah. killing it with just doing it for two hours. Because I keep wanting to come back next week to go see what's happened, to see what's yeah. going to happen. Um, yeah. Like we first started off, John Cena came out, called out Roman Reigns. Um, surprisingly, Roman Reigns did not come out. Uh, he was addressed by Paul Heyman that uh, uh, Roman Reigns would speak to uh, his, give him the answer on his challenge later in the evening. Or, you know, when he said, when he's ready to do it. Um, so, of course, it was good to see John Cena with the pop and the nostalgia. But since that is going towards the end, we're going to kind of move into more of what their show was. Uh, as you had said, a returning Finn Balor was successful against Sami Zayn on SmackDown. Um, good to see the Prince back on the main channel. Also, too, don't, I got to give my I got to give um, some recognition to someone. And that has to be Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn is the only person that I can see lose consistently on a day-to-day -day basis. And it does not affect his status there. No. Like, no. it like this did not hurt him. Hmm. And I kind of just like, yo, it's kind of a kudos to him. Because at first, I really was so like, like, yo, well, I, I don't know how Sammy's going to keep this up for years to come. Like when he was first there and stuff like that. But then switching to the whole conspiracy thing, you know, with the with the kind of, you know, the, milita the, the military militia type of gear and everything. And I'm like, I now see what you're doing. Because like even when Kevin Owens continues to beat him, I'm just like, yo, it's not affecting your status. Like when they tell me he's going to be in a fatal five-way match for the Intercontinental title, I'm like, cool, good. When he won, I was like, yes, okay. And then, and then he's always in the mix. Yeah, I, I, I like it. I really like it. So I just, I got to give kudos to him on that, man. Like a lot of people don't give Sammy his just doing his credit, but like he's great on the microphone, great in the ring, as we can see and stuff like that, and just didn't disappoint this past Friday. Wow. And neither did the Prince. I agree, man. Sammy Zane's a natural baby face who somehow become a masterful heel. 
Yes. That's that's, that's good. If you know him, if you know him from NXT days, that's a natural baby face. Yes, it His is. Offense, things like Blue Thunder Bomb and things like that, and Haluva kicks. Yep. Those are, those are, those are fan favorite moves. Yes, so to him to be able to turn it and flip it is so great. I think because too, because we know. I feel because we're older now, and we know more the we know we know more 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 beyond more beyond kayfabe. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we know we know we know the Sami Zayn is also Sami for Syria. We also know he's that guy. So yeah. we want him to always be in there and so like that. So we'll give him the reaction that we know he needs to make sure that he remains a top level player because he is heavy heat. Oh yeah. So and we know, and I feel I feel they know, and he he is great. Um, he is. And it's, him and Kevin Owens right now, seriously, if they both popped up in NXT right now, I guarantee they chant fight forever. Immediately. Bro, they will blow the roof off of that thing. When last time Kevin came for war games and people lost their mind, it was just like, yo, lost. let them two come back. back. I, wish, I, I really wish, I just, go back right. I wish Kevin would go back and pop up Powerball Carry Across right now. Yeah. Be if like, Vince <laughs> really, bro, if Vince really wanted to like put, put, put AW away. He should have moved Kevin Owens back. He should have moved Sami Zayn back. He should have been moved Finn Balor back. All right. Ooh, this, yo, back. yo, yo. Finn, Joe, Owens, Sami, and a fatal four way for the NXT championship? Bro. They had that's all sellout. on their roster. That's sellout. Bro, that's a sellout. That was sellout. Bro, see. Bro. <sighs> But Matt, but but look, still, still though, a, a great match between Finn and Sami Zayn. Definitely to get Finn, great match, great match. yeah, definitely good to get him started. Uh, some some new things that came to WWE is, of course, you know, people continue to want to get integrated into other companies, other um type of events and stuff like that. And then that uh this past weekend was the Rolling Loud Festival in Miami, and WWE was present. WWE actually had two matches there, uh, a re- uh one regular singles match and a title match. Uh Angelo Dawkins uh, was taking on Chad Gable. It was good to see Angelo Dawkins back in the ring and was able to defeat Chad Gable in the ring, along with the SmackDown Women's Champion Bianca Belair versus Carmella, and of course, uh, Bianca Belair could retaining her women's championship, but also giving really big kudos to Carmella because, as she said, definitely had to step her game up in order to defeat her that night and as elevated her as a championship, as a champion, excuse me, and as it should because Carmella is a fantastic performer in the ring. Yep. Do not let the looks, the smiles, and the champagnes fool you. She is not to be uh, taken lightly in that ring. So, um, yep. only thing about rolling loud, uh, didn't want to be that guy. So yeah, all, man. All, all, all the black people at the cannabis event, huh? Yeah. Hmm. So not all the black people there, right? Okay. Um, I will say this though, uh, just outside of that though, a lot of controversy for the rolling loud crowd itself. Um, from lit watching the show, didn't seem like the crowd was that into it, but also too, I think that was just the crowd in general because there was just a lot of, I think, just people being back. I think that energy still hasn't really kind of circulated like that. Um, which is why uh, another reason why I say I think there is no audience like the WWE audience because there's a comp, there's a common thing there. We're all here to either like this person, hate this person, cheer for this person, boo for this person. But we're both we're all there to interact in this pinpointed event that's going on. As for them, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. People who you would think be hyping up the crowds, going crazy. Crowd was not interacting with them. Um, shout out to the women, though, uh, because, uh, look, just again, this crowd was very, very mundane. But the women really had them lit up to, uh, to like, Big Lotto. Um, um, I always I forget a lot of these these new people's names. Like, uh, Dream Doll, I believe, was there. Tarant, there were a lot of women that actually had those crowds hype jumping and everything like that so it's just so yo know, so shout out to you know the lady rappers and stuff like that who i thought again in my opinion don't get enough credit as they should and should not be having to work four times harder just to prove that they're here but that is for a whole other part this is k Faye. hey okay, k Faye. but got, shout, shout, shout out to cynthia lucy yet man she broke it down in a very good way on the ig video too man if y'all follow cynthia lucy yet check out that video as well it was really dope and i, I agree too man i felt we are wrestling fans, we all come to an event because we're ready to suspend our belief and enjoy it. 
We are rolling loud. They're there for music. They don't even, some of the dumb probably don't even know who these people are, honestly. Yeah. And it's like, and that's, that's what made it hard too because Bianca Belair is a popular superstar in WWE. Yes, she is. At Rolling Loud, at Rolling Loud, they might not know who she is that way. And it's like, and I felt like she did great. I say trans or whatever, but like the reaction they were expecting, I don't think they got. No, no, I think a lot of stuff was delayed. Um, it, it, and then most of the people too, it's very hard to see. Like, it's already hard to like, when you're in a stadium, like there, there people are like, the wrestlers are relatively small in the ring, wherever you're at. Like, even if you're kind of down below, it's still kind of like hard to get and see all the views. That stage is massive, like massive. So for even the person who is in the front, if this is the ring, they're over here, down here, looking at you. Now then just add the top of the ring, which them standing on it, and this person is now looking at this happen and looking at them run from all the way up yeah. here. And that's just the person that's in the front. So now imagine all the way in the back. It's like, I don't really know what's going on. So when pops hit, they come late. Reactions came late and stuff like that. Like when she was pin, when she pinned Carmella, it took them like five seconds to know that she had pinned her before they cheered because yeah. they didn't know she pinned yeah. her. So, yeah, you know, again, but, yeah, yeah, you know and, but and then to get, and, then, and people don't understand that I've never been to like to live events too. There's no commentary. Like when you watch yeah. it at home, they think they, they think they hear it. We don't hear commentary at the lobby event. We're only watching the lobby event. So all the the way the announcers get the hype, whatever they don't, they don't have that. They're just no. watching a match. This is all they're hearing. Yep. Yep. And that's if yeah. they hear that. That's if yeah. they hear that. Like if it's a small stadium. Oh, you'll feel all of that. WrestleMania, you don't hear none of that. Like big stages, I don't know. When you in that ring, you don't hear none of that. When you walk out the entrance, you don't know if they're booing you, if they're cheering you. You don't know if the match is going well, if it's not going well, because it's so hard to hear because of how big the place is. So, yep. so, but, but those performers still put on to the best of their capability. So, shout out to Chad Gable, shout out to Angelo Dawkins, shout out to Carmella, and of course, shout out to the WWE SmackDown champion Bianca Belair for representing WWE at Rolling Loud. Did a very, did a fantastic job, no matter what. Like, did definitely yep. held it down for us. Um, and continuing into SmackDown, man, probably one of the things I am looking forward to. Seth Rollins versus Old Man Edge, the logo of WWE. Yes, when I tell you this is probably one of Seth's best promos. Oh God, Seth is in that bag. Yo, I just man, (laughs) I just want to say how Seth be doing, bro. Like, like Seth just be, bro, like just be coming back and just perfecting things. Like it's just like, yo, I cannot wait to see this man i cannot wait because like even even to the point of where it's funny that you now starting to see this the edge within seth rollins you know what i'm saying like seth rollins has always established himself as this the best in the world like you know like we, we both gonna say best in the world but then to see edge come in and to see that that more sadistic side coming out because when we used to kind of see him do like these crazy things it was more of like out of need for survival flight or flight you know what I'm saying? He's with the corporation yeah. and running. It's always kind of like that little fear behind it. So, you know, like that little that little skeet weasel, that scamp. Here, though, you see Seth Rollins know I'm that dude. I don't need nobody. And, hey, I'm here to finish what I started with you. And I'm going to go just as deep in the darkness as you can. Let's see who walks out. Yep. Oh. Oh, it was chilly, bro. Rolling in deep. That's what I'm talking. That's why, like, and the thing too, and like between these two, the history. Even before too, Ed said, I didn't forget. Who? I didn't forget. And he said the next he said last time I hesitated and I didn't pull the trigger. Next time, hmm. I will not. Hey, you're like, oh bro, you know, something slap to be off the chain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, firstly, I was happy to see that Cesaro and Seth Rollins was finally done. 
Um, yes. I'm not. I love both of them, but I was sick of seeing them feud. The feud should have ended at WrestleMania. Big facts. For some reason, it wasn't. But I'm happy to see this man. This feud going on, and and again, so I feel we should not see Edge every week. No, Edge is an attraction. He's an attraction. He's special. Mm -hmm. uh, he's still on, on return. Whatever. We shouldn't see him full time. He should be wrestling on SmackDown every week going into this. Maybe one match. Maybe. But we really shouldn't see him oh. in the ring until SummerSlam. No, no. There's uh, to be honest with you, there there's no match he needs to have. Like I know having the match that the trip, the the six man he had last week, but that that was okay. You know, returning crowd to Houston, uh, yeah. opening back up to the live audience, and also too, it coincided with the beef. You know what I'm saying? Ray and Dominic, Usos, you and you and Roman. It made sense. Here, there's no there's no uh, including parties involved for Edge to need to have a match with somebody. We know Edge can still go. We know Edge still got the mindset. We don't need to see him in the ring. Like if, if it's not cutting promos, if it's not sabotaging one of his matches, let it stay until SummerSlam. Treat him like Brock. He is a spectacle. Let us see him every once in a while. And I agree. You can, wow. And you can hold him for a while. Yeah, because we do not want to run up his bump card, man. Like, mm -hmm. he's he's 46, 47 years old. Mm -hmm. You can't – he's only almost 50. You, you can't run his bump card up. And I'm going to be real, man. Like, I don't – I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be funny at all. Seth, I remember what you did to Sting. All right? Yeah. We're not going to do this to our Hall of Famers and our nah, legends. All right, nah. man? Listen, I, listen. I know you, you must be a fan of Randy Orton, but you're taking the word legend killer to, to – too low. Yeah, like bro, chill. Like we chill didn't need to be like real man. Like we're so. <laughs> I I I don't was like I still wanted to have Sting matches, Seth. Right. I still wanted to face the Undertaker, and now I can't. You were tired him at Night of Champions. I thought Vince was like, what? Night of so, Champions. Right. Do I do they even? I, did they even have one last year? All right, Night of Champions. Did they? God. No, they did. Didn't they? Had one, huh? No, they had United one. Champion. No, they had one, right? No, they did. They, they definitely. No, no, they definitely had one. I got. Hold on, hold on. No, they had one. They had. They had that. They go, I'm sure they had one. They, they they go back between. You see the Night of Champions and Class. No, 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 no. It, it was. It was. It was. It was Class Champions. I do remember. Um, it was. That was the one where uh Roman beat down Jay. That was that one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now and that was the one. Yeah. 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 And now that, that was the one where all them um them uh Hall of Famers and came and got their revenge back on Randy yeah. for all the stuff yeah. he had done. That's that yeah. one. That's true. Bo, I almost forgot to remember before uh before too man. Overall, like, I'm super excited about Seven Edge, Cena. We got, we got, we about to get to Cena. We about to get to Cena. We got, yeah. we just got, we yeah. got, we got two more things we got to touch on. Just uh, Tony Storm being welcomed into SmackDown. Um, loving the new finisher she got. Nice. Storm one is Bro, it is so Storm dope. Storm one is so dope. Yeah, I, and yes. Though, I'm, I'm so sad Zelina got Zelina got fed this Tony, but I love Zelina. But that was dope. She sold that. Listen, she did. She did. It's called, um, it's called I, Storm One, right? Storm One. Yeah, Storm One. Yeah. So uh normally her old one was Storm Zero, the power bomb, and now it's this one. So she changed it. Well, actually, she just brought it back because that was her finisher, but I think it wasn't approved by WWE as far as just like people being able to take the bump and stuff, but now she yeah. brought it to do it uh here. And so I think it was dope. Like you said, um, uh sorry about that for Zelina Vega, but to um it's kind of okay for her because she hasn't necessarily established herself as a wrestler just yet. We've always kind of seen her as that best manager. So this is kind of like stage one for her as a wrestling performer now. So it's just kind of like, yo, these are the bumps and chops that we didn't see you do because you were with Andrade. But now that you know you're by yourself, like I don't think it really is going to affect her, especially playing a heel and stuff like that. But nah, I would, come on, come yeah. On. But I think she'll be she okay. Is, she is a star. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So she'll be fine. And then um, we had uh, still the tag team SmackDown champion beefs, uh, Dominic versus Jimmy. Great match. Like, you know, you'll never be disappointed with them, too. I'm definitely in a fight forever type of mood when it comes to their feud. Um, Jimmy picking up the win, of course, dirty tactics uh, with the help of his brother, same as money in the bank. Um, and then that led to the end of the show. When the big dog, the tribal chief, would come tribal out, chief. 
would come out and address the challenge issued by John Cena. And let me tell you, just like his return at SummerSlam, you did not see this coming. You did not see this coming. Um, A promo was cut. And might I say, it was quite the promo. I'm sorry. I'm just thinking about John's nostalgia act that he put on Sunday Money in the Bank, and it Ooh. made me yawn. Like I'm sure it made the big dog yawn. What he what he what he say? The John Cena was like. Yeah. And what uh, that that man said the missionary position. The man said, and I quote, John Cena is like doing missionary every night. The same thing over and over again. And um, would disrespectfully or respectfully, not sure how you do that, but he did it, um, declined John Cena's offer at SummerSlam. A few things that we have never seen. Normally, you do kind of see the setup of where it's going to be, the you know champion taking the bait. But as Roman said, and I truly enjoyed it, I don't see you. I don't need to see you. I don't want to see you. And guess where they won't see you? At the main event at SummerSlam. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And again, I don't know if that's the solid plan. Uh, because as we know, moments later, Finn Balor came out, issued a challenge to Roman for SummerSlam, and he accepted. Um, which I don't mind. The first ever Universal Champion wanting his crown back. So I get it. It ain't like he did, had to, to prove himself on SmackDown week after week for the next couple of months. It, it he did just what he should have did. The Prince yeah. wants his throne. Is it is it is it uh, is it confirmed for, for SummerSlam? See, that's the thing. I think uh, a few people got confused about because another one of my friends also uh, was confused about it as well. From what he was saying, he issued since you won't accept his challenge, will you accept mine? So yeah. it hasn't been clarified. Is that a SummerSlam yeah. challenge or is that to be faced next week? We, so again, yeah. we we shall see. I'm not I'm not sure. Uh but either way, both were I mean, honestly, yeah. Way. Yeah, both very worth for SummerSlam, man. Come on, he wants his crown back. The crown he never lost. Never lost. He Against never the lost. tribal chief? Yeah. That's a good selling point. That's a good yeah. Yeah. selling point. I mean, I can see that, and like, I mean, like that—that that is a good time for him to bring back the real Demon King if he decided to. And or, I mean, or if we get into a little fantasy booking, what you got? What you got? The prince on, go, got? The prince goes out. Here comes the bloodline, and the bloodline is stopped by the Bullet Club. Oh. And the thing is, who and the thing is, Prince Devitt is a founding member of Bullet Club. A founding think about member. It. Adam Cole ain't got no beef no more. That's one. Yeah. You could get Bobby Fish to come out and be like, yo, hey, man, look, I get it, but hey, I rock with who I rock with. And you got your two members right there. Yeah. That could work. That could work because honestly, going into it. He will need backup going into whoever whoever he fused with. They're gonna need that backup automatically, just because of because because of Uso's presence. I like that man. I mean, and the that fact work. that I and the fact that I see him keep throwing this up now, even when he was doing this yeah. on SmackDown, I'm like, bro, that could and work. I, and I and honestly, I like to see a Bullet Club that I feel is actual threat. Let me tell you something before and like I I know we're near the end, but I just want to get this in and just just just, just oh, yeah, before though, like I. Again, I don't dislike AW guys. Okay, I dislike the creative that they think is so great. I don't like the fact that Cody can never be world champion. That was the whole point of me wanting to see him elsewhere. Also, yep. part of it, you know, and um, the fact that the Bucks and Omega hit the evil Mister McMahon button two years into the promotion, like they should still be good guys. Everybody, they should have established other guys by now. 
They shouldn't be the bad guys yeah. yet. And then, yeah, and I see then, it in like not I see it in the bad guys. I see it in the comments all the time, bro. And I remember there was somebody in the comments that was just like, "Yo, I want to come on here and talk for AEW." It's like, talk this. Who's the number one contenders for the tag team titles? I wait. No, nope, no answer. Better question. Yeah. Who's the number one contender for the AEW Heavyweight Championship? You don't know. Who's who's the number one contender for the women's AEW Championship? You don't know. Some don't folks know. will say, "Hey, no." Someone's like uh, Adam Page for the world. Adam Page has been number one in ranks for what two months now. I know that was was that supposed, was that supposed to be a slow burn. We're supposed to realize, and I feel the problem they have is that they instead of putting the real stuff on the actual two hour show, they think everybody has the time to watch the YouTube show or watch things they put on their Instagram page, or they think I'm supposed to know who who everyone in New Japan is, huh? And they they thought I was supposed to know who Nick Gage was. Who is Nick Gage? Well, and that was the thing too. They they did a lot of that. And it worked for Japan for us to go see what's going on in Japan. So, again, I will say that I would have never learned about the Okadas uh, um, from the Okadas uh, to the to, to everybody there, even to the Golden Lovers. I would have known about them had I not seen their YouTube stuff for me to go check that out. But that's for Japan. So I get that Japan don't push that over here in America. So it makes sense. So that's why it was a good thing and it worked for that. That don't work here. That don't work in America. In America, if you have a two hour program that you want me to invest in, that's where all of this should be taking place. Your side conversations and all of that should be on YouTube and it shouldn't have to fully correlate for us to have to watch that. Now, cool, you can have some type of interview that kind of goes sideways, and that's what's led to this week's match between so-and-so and so-and-so. But for you to go, oh, man, you got, you need to be watching this stuff on YouTube so then that way y'all can check out for AEW, I don't know why you think we're that invested. Yeah, you have Dynamite, Dark, and Being the Elite. We're supposed to watch all these shows every week to keep up with what's going on. That's longer than watching Raw. And if, to be honest, you, you're making me watch something that's going on of some things that's not going on. I'm just being honest with you. I don't know what your I don't know what AEW's number one feud is. I don't. What is it? What is your number one feud? Please put in the comments. What is AEW's number one feud right now currently going on? Like literally, like I'm not. Am I really supposed to think that the butcher and the blade? Can't beat the Young Bucks. Think about all the tag teams that they have not gotten over. Private Party, the Acclaim, Best uh, Friends, what, Best Friends. Was it uh H two something whatever? Uh, I know you're talking hybrid, about hybrid, hybrid two. Yep. Uh, 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 Jungle Boy uh, and uh, uh, what's his face, the uh, dinosaur yeah, dude. Yeah. Jurassic Express, uh, Varsity Blondes, um, Butcher, Butcher and Blade, um, who else? So all these attack Death Triangle. Oh, 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 oh Ray Phoenix and um, what's his yeah. face? Uh, uh, I don't know what's his name. Brothers. Yeah, yeah, Luke Brothers. Junior. Yeah, Luke Brothers. Proud and powerful. Where are the Lucha Brothers? Why are they not the tag champs? Though, bro, those two Pentagon is a is a beast. Like, why yeah. are they not champs? Yeah, but meanwhile, Generation Me is holding the tag titles. What y'all want me to and say, y'all? Fact. I should watch AEW though. That's the saddest part. Y'all have an immense amount of talent, and the Raw Tag Team Champions, who ain't really a tag team, are better than y'all. Where's Scorpio Sky? What happened? To, I thought he's supposed to be in a, a world title push. What happened to like? I, 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 I don't know. I guess Lance Lance Darby seemed like the better person to go since they just keep yeah, putting him on TV yeah. every single day. Yeah. Why is Chris Jericho facing MJF? Shouldn't that be Sammy Guevara? I thought they're trying to get Guevara over, not Jericho. Why is all this about Jericho? Why is Jericho? Like Why is Jericho still wrestling? 
Even better question, why why is Jericho your lead when he's the greatest B-list character of all time? I he should be building. Like I'm not a, I'm not a 100 percent advocate for WWE at all. But I tell some sometimes I tell I have to tell certain people certain stars didn't get over in WWE. It's not always because WWE held them back. It's because they just can't get over. All right. That's it. Like they just are not they're not the main event material that you may think or you may hope them to be. Because all these stars that have left and gone to AEW and those other companies, you're like, man, they're gonna push us in the moon. And did they? Did you nope. invest? Were nope. you convinced? No. No. Nope. Even no. even even the pops when they come out aren't great. Like, yep. bro, you're 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 trying so hard to not be WWE when you should be trying so hard to be WWE. Yep. Their formula ain't broke. They have three shows that sign the two different networks. Networks. Streaming platforms everywhere. They make more attendance than the Super Bowl. Yeah, and I people would... really be hitting me up. They, you know they be in the ratings war. The ratings war? What war? Oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. You mean the ratings war for cable? Don't nobody fucking watch because we got streaming now? You think I'm really finna show up at 7 o'clock on a damn Tuesday to watch NXT? No. I'm gonna watch it at fucking two in the morning on Hulu when I'm getting, you know, doing my 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 regular things because this is a this is a family kayfabe. You feel me? <laughs> but you know, Sal 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 do you know the movie the deals. Did? The movie deals, they're afraid of us. Who? Y'all, y'all went head to head with SmackDown on Friday nights, and y'all ratings tanked. You went tanked. Head to, you went head to head with NXT that's on for an hour, and you were barely beating them. Barely beating them, guys. It wasn't like runaway ratings. You had you had to you had to put someone through a bed of barbed wires, and that still didn't beat that still didn't beat us wanting to see Shotzi Blackheart beat Candice Lorraine. It still didn't do anything. You guys had to bring back Sting, okay? All right, you had to bring back Sting. Sting is a clone. The real Sting is at home. Like, hey man, I, I don't know why I signed for this, but uh, here we are. Yeah, man. man. Yeah, take 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 the stink on, but um, yeah, but ladies and gentlemen, I mean, uh, yeah, it, it, it's no again, it's no hate, it's only criticism, and it's just exactly uh, being honest here at the wrestling podcast for us by us. But of course, you've already heard what we think. We always love to know what y'all think in the comments, so please comment below what you think about this yeah. past uh Monday Night Raw SmackDown. Hopefully, looking forward to the coming smackdown got a lot of stuff coming our way for the summer slam the biggest party in las vegas hosted by cardi b it is going down i know that i am trying to be in attendance uh we are going to be trying to uh make sure kayfabe is in the building yeah. as well so make sure y'all continue to check us out as always it has been a pleasure and we will catch you next time here on kayfabe 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 kayfabe